From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. We have a very enlightening program for you today. And uh, this first one we are uh, all aware of. Take a listen. Earth sets climate records in 2013 and now already in 2014. We're experiencing that all right. And then this one, oh my, Al-Qaeda chief calls for attacks on U.S. in a 9-11 speech. And then, oh, I couldn't get over this one. Hezbollah terrorists roam the world on foreign passports. In other words, they are everywhere on the passports that they are sort of uh, creating for themselves. But before we get into all the serious things, I just want to say happy birthday, Jack. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, yes, my word. He's been getting all kinds of birthday cards, all kinds of birthday letters. And the, the main theme is to say not only are we grateful that you're in good health, but we're so grateful that you help us to be aware of the soon coming of the Lord and what's going on in the world. Jack, everybody appreciates it. And I'm going to tell you, I've already read approximately 1,400 birthday cards, and usually it ends up with anywhere from two to 3,000. And I read them, folks, because you take your time, I look at them, and I look at every name, and many times uh, pile together and pray over these people. Thank you so much. And you know, Chuck Goldman, my announcer, and I are really getting old. <laughs> And last year, when they put the candles on Chuck's cake, it lit up the entire house. They had to turn off all the switches. I'm glad I'm not that old. But you know, Chuck and I are now at the age. Almost all of our friends are already with the Lord. And if we live any longer, they're going to think we missed heaven. Come on, Chuck. Let's go. Amen. The Lord's coming soon. Hallelujah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jack, and may the Lord give you another very healthy year to do what the, those letters express. Make us all aware of what is really happening in the world. And I'd like you to see something that Jack produces. It is a magazine, Awake America, the world's final warning. And you know where he set the clock? 11.59, whoa, that sounds like the Lord could come at any moment, doesn't it? And here's from USA Today, closing time? Oh my, oh my, closing time, that sounds serious. But here's something good. Perhaps today we'll hear the trumpet sound. And again, that's the title of the magazine that he uh, produces every other month. Now let me just ask Jack. Are we really, really awaking America to the, what's happening? Because the Bible wants us to be awake. The Bible expresses everything going on in the world, doesn't oh, it? Oh, Rex, so the people are writing in those birthday cards and saying the most important video you've ever made is the one you're offering right now uh, concerning that we are the generation 15 times Revelation rumblings tells us we are the generation. No ifs, ands, or buts. And you're going to hear some of the reasons today. But next week, tell others. This is going to be the most dynamic thing you've ever heard. And there isn't a prophecy preacher anywhere who can dispute what will be said. That we are the generation. We're not setting a date and an hour. But near, yes. Jesus said you'll know when it's near. In fact, the Greek is I command you to know when it's near even at the door. And we can almost hear the knock already. Matthew 24, verse 33. Amen, Jack. Amen. Well, you know, USA Today, and they've got something, two words, closing time. Now, I'm going to ask Jack, according to the Bible, does that mean end of the world? What are they talking what, what, what does the Bible say? Praise the Lord, Rex. I love 120 times this book says that the world will never end. And... Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21, both say it's a world without end. Amen, amen. And every Catholic Mass for 2,000 years has ended that way. Now, what is the problem? Well, the Bible speaks about the end of the world 
but it is not the exact word that's been translated in all of these verses of Matthew 13, verses 39, 40, 49, Matthew 24, 3, Matthew 28, 20, and Hebrews 9, 26. Those six times it should say the end of the age, not the end of the world. The end of the church age. We're going to be raptured, called away in Revelation 4 1, and never find the church again from chapter 4 onward. We're on the other side. So it's never the end of the world, but it's the end of the church age, which is just about to happen. And you're going to hear why the world cannot end a number of times in today's program. But let me add one more thing here. Let's prove it. Matthew 24 3, the disciples came and said, Jesus, what shall be the signs of your coming and the end of the world? No, end of the age. Why? You turn the page to chapter 25, verses 31 and onward, and it tells how Christ is coming back to reign on earth forever and ever. Now, the world can't end if in the next chapter he's coming back to reign here forever and ever, and that is what's going to happen. The Bible says in Revelation 11:15 that the the Lord shall come, and the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever here on terra firma. So some of you guys have it all wrong. Let's get the Bible right. Now, the coming of Jesus is right at the door. And we are to warn you. The Bible says in Ezekiel 33, 3, blow the trumpet and warn my people. Isaiah 58, 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and warn my people. I'll tell you, you preachers, on your Sunday morning services with your good field meetings and your lattes, and now some of them having booze to start a morning service, God forgive us for our backsliding, God forgive us for our coldness, but he's coming soon. Listen, Romans 13, verses 11, 12, knowing the time that now it is high time to awaken out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. What's that? The salvation of the body. When he says, come up hither, and we go up in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. All right? That is so near that it could happen in the next few months. It could happen easily in 2014. And next week, I'm going to shock you with one of the most important programs dogmatically showing you that we are the generation, but you're going to hear a lot about that today. Oh, let's get ready. Prepare to meet your God, Amos 4.12. Jack, I think you answered my next question. Actually, you know, I love what you just saw. Perhaps today we'll hear the trumpet sound. Uh, trumpet sound, that has to do when the Lord calls Christians home, not when he comes to the earth, right? Oh, yeah, let me give it. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. There's Chuck Oman. He's got to get there soon. At our age, we may, Chuck. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, the dead in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, frighten one another with these words. No, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's what we some Christians act because they're not ready. Listen, when he comes, there are two groups. The Philadelphian church and the Laodiceans. The Philadelphia church is Revelation 3.10. I will keep you from, out of, the hour of testing which comes upon the whole world. All the judgments that are coming. Armageddon, the terrorism. We're not going to be here. We're kept from it. But there's another crowd in Revelation 3.16 and that's the crowds in these churches today that aren't living the life. And he says, I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I were, would you were cold or hot. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. I'll spit you out. In the Greek, it's M-E-O, and it's not very neat. You make me vomit. God's speaking about some of these Christians today who run to all the beer joints and run to the nightclubs and run to the dance halls and run to the dirty, rotten movies and run to the pornography shops. I never knew you. Because I'll say it's time rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, naked spiritually, and you're going to be left behind. And I'll tell you, millions of those who talk about Christ's return aren't going to be there. 
left behind by the millions. Get saved. Get right with God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you're saved, you begin to act differently, live differently, talk differently, and sometimes smell differently because you've been in the wrong joints. Jack, you know what? <laughs> I think that you sort of went right well, back I'm to that preaching. first article. Wake America, didn't it? All right, we're going to go on here. 2013. Whoa, was a record-setting year across the globe. Remember that? Remember the weather? Take a Look, one hot planet Earth sets record in 2013 and going on Pacific warming 15 times faster than ever. Midwest shaken by storms. Oh, the tornadoes out there. Something else. And then the Philippines disaster leaves millions without homes. I'll never forget that. And then 10,000 fear dead in the Philippines after Typhoon uh, Haiyan. And then with dangerous sub-zero wind chills, the National Weather Service has declared oh, a frozen reporter advisory. Poor guy out there reporting what's going on. Crossroads of the storm. And there you see something that we've all been looking at. Now that was in uh, Times Square, Manhattan. But something else happened there. Whoa, in Atlanta. Oh, frozen in chaos of people could not even get through Atlanta. Our friends, I'll tell you, the Arctic blast really crippled most of the South. Remember what happened? Oh, my, our hearts went out to them. Now, I've named uh, several different things in association with the weather. The first one was the tremendous heat that we had in 2013. Jack, does the Bible talk about it? The worst in history, not just over 2013, in history since recorded temperatures were taken. Now, there's what time when it's really going to get hot, and that is in Revelation 16, verses 8 and 9. The fourth angel poured out his bowl of judgment upon the sun, S-U-N. And power was given unto the sun to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with a great heat. It's a judgment that comes during the tribulation hour because of sin, and they wouldn't repent. Now, Carl Sagan said there's an hour coming when there's going to be a horrendous earthquake, and it takes place and blots out the sun. And that is God's way of protecting people so that they won't all die through that judgment that's hitting the earth. And that's there, Revelation 6, 12, I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and though there was a great shaking, a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, darkened. And he said that could last for 90 to 120 days. But Jesus said in Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, at the end of the seven-year period before Christ comes to set up his kingdom on earth forever, he said the sun and the moon were darkened. Why? To save life. All right, Jack. Now, I'm going to combine some other things. Storms, hurricanes, typhoons. Jesus speaking again in Luke 21, verse 25, he says, Nations will be in distress with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. There's where you get all your typhoons and hurricanes and storms. If you think it's been bad now, just wait. How about the tornadoes there, Jack? Uh, Luke 21, 26, men's hearts will fail them for fear, for looking after those things which shall come to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Tornadoes. And then, you know, you mentioned earthquakes just a moment ago. How about that? Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 7 and Mark 13, 8, there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, many happening simultaneously. And of course, Revelation 16, 18 says, and this is shocking, listen carefully, he says, there was a great earthquake such as never was since men were upon the face of the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. This is all during the tribulation after the rapture. But what is this ter terrible earthquake? The return of Jesus. All the armies of the world have come against Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2. Christ says, I love my people, Israel. And he comes back with the armies in heaven, Revelation 19, 14, the Christians who were raptured. And lo and behold, his feet hit the Mount of Olives in Zechariah 14, 4, and it splits down the center from east to west and crumbles sideways from north to south. The coming of Jesus, and that is about to happen, and soon, ladies and gentlemen, everything proves it. We are the generation. Fifteen times in my new video, I prove that we, alive today, are not going to see death. 
He's coming in our generation. Jack, you know, that is really, really encouraging. With everything we see going on in the world, we're going to get some, to some things that are very, very serious. Uh, over in the Middle East, oh, how serious it is. But it kind of points to our offer of this week. Revelation rumblings, are you kidding? We can hear rumbling out there. You need to take a look, please, at the promo. 2,000 years ago, our Savior, the Lord Jesus, taught his followers to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. After praying this prayer for 2,000 years and millions of weekly church services, the answer is about to happen. Christ's second coming may occur in 2014 or within months of that date. We are the generation who, after 20 centuries, are about to experience the greatest event in world history, the return of Christ for 1,000 years and then for all eternity as heaven is transferred to earth. Sounds impossible? Dr. Vanapi, in analyzing his accumulation of 15,000 memorized scripture texts and reviewing 10,385 coded time events in his Prophecy Bible, dogmatically concludes that we are the generation that will be raptured to escape verse 21 judgments and then return seven years later with Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In the video study prepared by the Van Eppies, Revelation Rumblings, they prove 15 different times that we are the generation awaiting the most blessed and spine-tingling event in the annals of history. Nothing else must happen. We are the generation. Be ready. Soon global headlines will inundate the world stating, Christ has returned. Order Revelation Rumblings for the most important reports that Doctors Jack and Rex Sullivanapi have ever recorded. Oh my, oh my, those four words. We are the generation. My, we need to know what's going on in the world. Are we going to have a one world government, a one world religion? All in here and so much more. You'll understand the headlines if you have this in your home. So 800 number, make the call right away, please. You know, friends, recently, whoa, the Syrian president warned that the Saudi Arabian political and religious ideology is a threat to the whole world. Take a look at this here. This is the Syrian president, Assad, Wahhabi ideology threatening entire world. Whoa, Hezbollah, terrorists roam the world on foreign passports. I couldn't believe that one. I talked about that right up front, remember? They're roaming the world on foreign passports. And Europe, Islamic fundamentalism is widespread. Oh, I can't believe that it's taking over Europe. And then, of course, this is Robert Mueller. He is now leaving the FBI, and he sees terror threats growing. Syria called hotbed of terror threat to the United States. Can you believe it? What's going on over there? How can they threaten us? Well, Jack will talk about that. Al-Qaeda terrorists behead 40 FSA rebels in northern Syria. Oh, my. It breaks my heart to see it. a headline like that. Al-Qaeda chief calls for attacks on U.S. in 9-11 speech to followers. And then the video, we will fly the Islamic flag where? Over the White House. Ah. Oh. And then American fighters in Syria are at risk of being radicalized by Al-Qaeda. Returning terrorists, a serious threat to Canada. Wake up over there. Serious threat. And then MI5 chief warns British public of terror threat. And then experts warn of Al-Qaeda biological weapons threat. Now, you know, friends, I think you can see here all of that, more or less, has to do with terrorism going on in the world. A threat to the United States, a threat to the world. So I'm going to ask Jack one question about all those headlines. Does the Bible refer to terrorism, Jack? Did you hear that? Britain is being threatened. Canada is being threatened. America is being threatened. We're going to set up the flag of Islam in front of the White House. And you preachers are not warning your people. 
God forgive you, one out of every four verses in this book is about the return of Christ, and they never hear it from your lips. One lady said, I bought your prophecy Bible and gave it to my pastor, thinking that might move his heart. You don't hear it. And oh, I'd hate to be a one horse, half carrot, knock, knee, thin, spin, goose, pimple, deacon, fairy, woman, pleasing preacher. God, oh. we've got a message to preach. Preach the word. Second Timothy 4 2. You guys won't do it. You got your little lattes and your parties on Sunday morning and your rock bands. Let's get down to business. Let's warn them. Son of man, I've made you a watchman. Therefore, hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me. Ezekiel 3. 16. Now listen carefully. Yes, it's in the Bible, Rexella. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 37, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it Noah's day? The whole world filled with violence. Genesis 6, 11. Now listen to Jesus. He's the one preaching all these things, not Van Impey. Luke 21, 9. When you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrors and be not frightened. These things must first happen before what? When they're happening, then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, look up your redemption of the bodies. Come up hither, draws nigh. That's how near it all is. And Rexella, in verses 31 and 32, Jesus added, and when it's happening full blast and you heard the headlines, it's here. I've got over a hundred places where they're going to attack soon as Muslims try to rule the entire world, as Khomeini of Iran says will happen, and as Kabani of the American Muslims is also predicting. Now hear this. When it's happening full blast, you know my kingdom, when I'm coming to reign on earth, is near. And then he says, the generation that lives to see this prophecy, you just saw it, shall not pass from the earth. We're going home soon. We are the generation. I love the way you quote the Bible, Jack, don't you? You know, the Bible is so accurate because God knows the past, present, future, and the Bible gives the outline of everything. What happened in the past and what happened then and what's going to happen. Well, I'm going to go back 2,500 years, okay? And I'm going to go back to King Nebuchadnezzar in a dream. It was amazingly accurate for today. Take a look. The Emperor's Dream. I'm going to stop here for just one moment, friends, and ask Jack, where's this dream 2,500 years ago given in the Bible, Jack? Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 to 43. Now, when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream, it only started with the third empire. The first two were already passe, and that was Assyria, Genesis 2, 14, and Egypt, Genesis 12, 10. Now, his dream starts with a head of gold. Rexella, I want that put on the screen right yeah, now. Yeah, let's put it on the screen. Right. And wow, the this statue there. This would be the third world empire, uh -huh. and that's Babylon, Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. Next, we have Media Persia, Daniel 5.28, Greece, Daniel 8.28. 20 and 1020, and then, of course, Rome, Daniel 926, and the Book of Romans, all right? All seven of these empires have come, but then he says they're going to have 10 horns. What does that mean? 10 toes on that image and 10 horns on the beast in Revelation uh, 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. The 10 toes, Daniel chapter 2. Uh, in those verses there, depict those toes in chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24. For years, I always thought that this would be 10 nations, but then I got shocked as I studied more history under Rabbi Hagian, who said, when we get a 10-division world empire, our Messiah will come and reign here in Israel. And St. Jerome, that great Christian leader of Catholicism in the early days, said, when we get a 10-division world empire, that is when our Christ returns. Now, here is why we are the generation. Daniel 2.44, in the days of these 10 kings, the 10-division world empire, Christ, God will set up his kingdom, which shall never, never be destroyed. It shall stand forever. That's why we're the generation. The 10-division world empire has been outlined by the Club of Rome. Read it, there, Rexella. I got it right there on the screen. Ten Division World Empire, America, Canada, Mexico, South America, Australia, New Zealand, number three, four, Western Europe, five, Eastern Europe, 
then six, Japan, seven, South Asia, eight, Central Asia, North Africa, and Middle East, number nine, and the remainder of Africa, number ten. And Let oh, me add my, oh, my, yes. Amen. I said it before I repeat it. In the days of these ten, and it's here, it's on the drawing boards. Christ sets up his kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and that's the kingdom proving that we are the generations. For if he reigns here forever, the world can never end, as I said at the beginning. Praise the Lord. We're the generation. Yes, we are, Jack. <laughs> you know, if I were there with you, what I would do, I would take your hand, and I would say, are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Is he in your heart? Is he your Savior? That's why he came. That's why he died. To be your savior he cares for you he loves you he'll forgive you of anything and he'll walk with you every day we you open your heart to him here's jack to pray that wonderful prayer with you jack oh are you ready for that great moment the lord jesus breaks through the blue with the raptured saints millions of millions the lord cometh with ten thousands of the saints jude 14. be ready to go up first and then to come back with him. How? By trusting in the cross of Christ and the shed blood for your sins to be washed away. Lord Jesus, precious Savior. Oh, thank you for the cross. Thank you for your suffering and the giving of your blood to wash all of us from sin. Jesus, I trust in you today. And I receive you as my own personal Savior. Come into my heart now. I ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I pray you did it. Did you do it? Please write to me if you did. There's my address. I'll send you this little book at absolutely free. First Steps in a New Direction. He'll walk with you every day if you accepted him as your Savior. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive Revelation rumblings. And you hear rumbling every day. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Revelation Rumblings. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. Please don't miss out on this wonderful offer, Revelation Rumblings. And you know, everything today said it, didn't it? And much, much more. So make the call. Do you feel guilty? God doesn't want any of his children to feel guilty. Here's a wonderful, wonderful thought. Guilt is a burden God never intended his children to bear because all of our sins are gone. How good to have the Lord in our hearts today. And always remember that God cares for you, and so do we so very much. Bye-bye.